Good morning, everybody. Welcome to St. Mark's. It's the second Sunday of Advent. We're getting closer to Christmas, getting closer to snow. Yay. Um, Have some announcements today. We have Sunday School and Confirmation after class today. Uh, Wednesday evening at 6.30 is our Advent Holden evening prayer, which we will have in here. Uh, Thursday is quilting. Saturday is prayer shawl. Um, Next Sunday is uh, Sunday School and Confirmation again, as well as the council uh, will have their meeting. And then on the 19th, we have something special planned. Who has an ugly sweater? (laughs) Proudly has an ugly sweater. Um, We're going to have a Christmas party after worship. You are invited to wear your ugly sweater. I have one. I think it's pretty. I don't know what people say. Um, so you're invited to do that. We're going to have some games. We're going to have some prizes. We're going to have some fun. We're getting back to having community things happen here, so that's going to happen after worship. Plus, we have something special planned for the sermon that day, so I encourage everybody to come. Um, the Yankton Banquet is Thursday. I think there are still a couple of open spots in the back, so check if you are able to help out uh, with the Yankton Banquet. Uh, Christmas Eve worship is 5.30. Uh, We need a couple more um, worship assistants. Otherwise, we have quite a few people signed up for that. Um, If there's anyone that you would like to include in our prayers of intercession, people that need our prayers, please let me or Jolene know so we can add them into our prayer list. Um, And um, one thing I want you to note in the readings for today Our first reading is from Baruch, which is um, from the Apocrypha. Uh, It is a non-canonical reading, and every now and then we have an opportunity to do that. The thing is, the reading is wrong in here. So just listen to Leanne read it. And if Leanne makes a mistake, no one's going to (laughs) know. There are a couple of announcements. uh, Abby, do you have something that you'd like to share? Yay. Great, thank you. Any other announcements? Yes. Oh! This afternoon uh, at 1.30, the Verdigree Choir will put on their annual Christmas concert at the Catholic Church in, uh, in Verdigree. It'll be the traditional concert. Then this evening at 6.30, we are going to perform half of our concert with Lori Larson and her group at the Barn Uh, by center. So if you need something to put you in the Christmas spirit, please try to make one of those two concerts. Thank you. Okay, any other announcements? So if you're able, please stand for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the parent who rises us from slumber, the shepherd who gathers us on the holy mountain, and the deliverer who sets us free. Amen. Let us come before the living God in confession. As we wait and watch for the promised day of salvation, we open our hearts to you, O God. Search us and know us. Reveal all that we keep inside. To you, O God, we confess our sins, known and unknown. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us into your ways of justice and peace. Make us reflections of the radiant love of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved children of the Most High, you are gathered before the righteous judge who has mercy on all. Splash exuberantly in the waters of baptism where sin is washed away in the river of life. Dwell peacefully in the loving arms of the one who nurtures all creation. 
Go forth boldly in the assurance that your sins are forgiven. In the name of the one who is coming and is already here, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, give to all the people of the world knowledge of your salvation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Our first lesson this morning is taken from, from Baruch, chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. A reading from Baruch. 
Take off the garment of your sorrow and affliction, O Jerusalem, and put on forever the beauty of the glory from God. Put on the robe of the righteousness that comes from God. Put on your head the diadem of the glory of the everlasting. For God will show your splendor wherever under, everywhere under heaven. For God will give you evermore the name, righteous peace, godly glory. Arise, O Jerusalem, stand upon the height, look toward the east, and see your children gathered from west and east at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that God has remembered them. For they went out from you on foot, led away by their enemies, but God will bring them back to you, carried in glory as on a royal throne. For God has ordered that every high mountain and the everlasting hills be made low, and the valleys filled up to make level ground, so that Israel may walk safely in the glory of God. The woods and every fragrant tree have shaded Israel at God's command, for God will lead Israel with joy in the light of his glory, with the mercy and righteousness that come from him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We will read the psalm responsively. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies. <clears throat> to show mercy to our forebears and to remember your holy covenant. To set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Our second reading this morning is Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 through 11, a reading from Philippians. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you, because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think that think this way about all of you, because you hold me in your heart, for all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Jesus Christ. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ, you may, you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of the righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. Hmm. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the 15th year of the reign of the Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip ruler of the region of Eterea and Trachonides, and Lysanias ruler of Abilene during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the word, book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, 
The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And if the kids can come up front, please. I was worried there weren't going to be any today. (laughs) So I want you to take a look around. Take a look up here. Do you notice anything different and new from before? What do you see up here that you didn't see last time? You saw a tree. How many trees do you see? Two. Two. What else? What else do you see that looks different? The nativity scene. Okay. Yes, now, now she can see. What else, what, what, what color do you see on the altar? Blue. Blue. What color do you see the banners? Blue. And what color am I wearing on here? Blue. What about this? Blue. Yeah, we have candles. How many candles do we have? Five. Five. We have three blue ones, a pink one, and a white one. So this is a candle for hope. This is a candle for love. The pink one is for joy. This one is for peace. And then on Christmas Eve, we light this one. So Christmas, this time, it's not Christmas yet, right? When, when does Christmas happen? The 25th. 25th, right? And then 24th is the night before. But, we, but we, we get all prepared and ready for Christmas, don't we? I even have Christmas socks on. I have a Santa sock. And I have an elf sock. See, I get prepared for Christmas. There's all kinds of signs that we know that Jesus is coming. So that's why we have what's called Advent. So we're getting ready. Who's getting ready for Christmas? Who has the tree up in their house? Does anyone have decorations outside? Did anyone buy Christmas presents yet? You. Good job, Grandma. So that's awesome. So that's what this is about. And if you look behind you here, it says, Come, Lord Jesus. So we're waiting for Jesus to come. And you know what's really interesting? When you look in here, in the nativity scene, we have the cross. We have Mary and Joseph. Where's Jesus? He's not there yet. You know why? He's not born yet. So when you come Christmas Eve, Jesus will be in there because that's when he comes. And that's when we say, come, Lord Jesus. Okay, so let's get in a circle. We'll have a prayer. Okay, let's fold our hands. Repeat after me. Repeat after me. Good morning, God. Good morning, God. Thank you for today. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. We can't wait for him to come. We can't wait for him to come. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Where did I put my sermon? Okay. <clears throat> So grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from our Savior Jesus, the one who's very near. Amen. So let's look at a passage from our gospel reading today. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And there's a phrase that caught my eye right away in this passage, a baptism of of repentance. So let's start with the word baptize. Baptize. It comes from the Greek word baptizo, which means to wash. And it comes from bapto, which means to dip. 
So whenever I go back to the Greek word bapto, I think of guacamole. <laughs> I love guacamole. I love to make guacamole. And when I eat good guacamole, I baptize that chip. Not a civilized dip, mind you. You know, where you take one corner of a triangular um, tortilla chip and it comes into gentle contact with the guacamole? No. I get that chip in there as far as I can without getting my wrists full of guacamole. <laughs> it's a bit savage and uncivilized, you may think, but that's not my problem. And also keep in mind, John the Baptist did not invent or come up with baptism, a ritual washing or dipping or dunking. Ritual washing was already a part of Jewish life. It was a, it was a, a, a ritual of purification and cleansing. It was an act of that. And of course, being prone to sin and impurity, this ritual needed to be repeated throughout one's life. And John had a different approach to his ritual washing or dipping. It was only to be performed once in a lifetime. And this cleansing ritual was not complete without repentance. Ah, repentance. That's another word we need to discuss. So what is repentance? And I t Well, I'll tell you what it's not. It's not saying I'm sorry. It's not expressing or showing regret. It's not saying forgive me. That's confession. That's what we did in the beginning of every service. We always confess. So what is repentance? Ready for another Greek word? Greek word we have for repentance is metanoia. And that means a transformative change of heart. It's, and how is your heart changed? By literally turning your back on something like this. And you're able to turn your back on sin by God's extravagant grace. So repentance comes after confession. We confess we've done something wrong, and then we repent, pledge to do our best to turn our lives around. And we ask God to help us with turning our backs on our former lives. So how is your success rate on confessing and repenting? I mean, I know my scorecard is pretty dismal. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty good at confessing. But it's that repentance follow-through where we really fail, where I really fail. I say I'm going to change, and apparently I have a short-term memory. I step out of the parking lot after worship, and I'm back to where I was as a mess before worship. In our text, John the baptizer comes out of the wilderness calling for a baptism of repentance. To wash away all of that wilderness grime which keeps us from changing our lives. That desolate and isolating wilderness where God seems far away. That wilderness of sitting next to a loved one who's slowly dying. That wilderness of abandonment because of who you are or what you've done in your past. That wilderness of wondering where your next meal is going to come from. That wilderness of abuse. You might be saying to yourself right now, you're asking me to change my life, turn my back on sin when life won't leave me alone. I need to be released from this kind of life first. And so repentance is a lot easier said than done. So let's go back to that passage where I got that phrase, baptism of repentance, because another word caught my eye. He went out into all the region around the Jordan proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. So forgiveness is another word I'm going to look at. The Greek word for forgiveness is aphasis. See, I need to say all this Greek stuff because I was telling Al earlier, I'm $150,000 in student loan debt, so I'm making sure I'm getting my money's worth. <laughs> I'm not showing off. So where was I? Um, oh yeah, forgiveness. Forgive me, I'm sorry. See, I'll never do it again. <laughs> so, aphasis. That word can be translated as remission, release, or deliverance. We are released from our sins. 
we have been delivered from those forces which seek to separate us from God and from each other. We are no longer bound by that life which holds us down. We are living in remission. We are given a new life, our chance for a new life. John proclaims that we are able to prepare for a new way of life, a way of confession, transformation, and deliverance. It is a way of peace in this troubled, messed up, and untrusting world. A way where you are not just gently dipped into God's forgiving waters, but dunked, and dunked to the point where we almost drown. Our old self dies, and we come up out of the water reborn. Ah, that wilderness grime is washed away. We are fresh, clean, and new. And we don't just walk away fresh, clean, and new. We live and live out fresh, clean, and new. And because we are transformed, we transform the world. And because we've been healed, we heal the world. And because we've been given peace, we give peace to the world. And this can only come from Jesus, the Son of God, the one who brings us hope and peace. So this Advent season, we wait for the one who brings God's hope and peace. It's like we're in a waiting room at the hospital where we wait and wait and wait, waiting for that healing message from the doctor, for that medicine which sets everything in remission so we can live. We wait wondering when all of this is going to happen. Well, it's already happened, actually. But don't worry, you didn't miss out because it's happening right now. And it will continue to happen. That royal highway for Christ the King has been prepared. And Christ takes that highway through our wilderness with us and are waiting to bring us deliverance, transformation, and life. And along that highway, every ditch will be filled in, every bump smoothed out, the detours straightened out, all the ruts paved over, and everyone will be there to see the parade of God's salvation. Amen. Jordan's bank, the Baptist cry announces that the Lord is nigh. Awake and hearken, for he brings glad tidings of the King of Kings. Then cleanse me every life from sin, make straight the way for God within. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. 
We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all the people and places that yearn for God's presence. You send messengers into the world to proclaim the day of your coming. Make our bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay preachers confident in their preaching that their words and our lives witness to your grace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Send your spirit to all living creatures that are endangered. Provide them with shelter and care and bring us into right relationship with the earth that you create and call good. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Send leaders to our nations, cities, schools, and businesses to work on behalf of those who have lost parents, spouses, and loved ones, immigrants, the imprisoned, those living in poverty, and all who are oppressed. Make them bold in their commitments to justice and reconciliation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Send your servants to care for those who suffer. Use our ministries and our lives to reach out with compassion to those who are hungry, Press, Sue, Vicki Achenbach, Vicki, Virgil Vermas, Virgil. Grant them healing and wholeness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Send prophets to speak difficult truths, even when they are poorly received. Embolden those who ask hard questions and challenge accepting ways. Instill in your youth and elders alike a passion for pointing to Jesus in all things. Hear us, O God. Is great. Send joy and happiness to those who are celebrating a birthday this week, especially Annika Lauk, Annika, Jake Wagner, Jake, Crystal MacPreng, Crystal, Kathy Stark, Kathy, Becca Broders, Becca, Lindsay Dorr, Lindsay, Kayla Eisenhower, Kayla, Maggie Hochstein, Maggie, Jace Johnson, Jace, hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We remember your saints both those publicly celebrated and those more humbly remembered. Com com confident that your work will be completed, we live in faith until the days of your coming. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now it's time to share peace. Peace be with you and also with you and across the aisle. Peace be with you and also with you. And one more time for our YouTube watchers. Peace be with you and also with you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, and through whom you will make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 my heart, my heart adores you. My heart is glad to say the word. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people, fill us with your light, bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be. Give us this day 
our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for This is Christ's table. It's a table of love and welcome. It's a table of fellowship with the poor and communion with the earth. So come, those of you with the great faith and those of you who wish you had more. Come, those of you who have tried to follow Jesus and those of you who have failed. And come, those of you who depend on this meal for your lives and for those of you for whom it is a strange thing. Beloved, here is bread, here is wine, here is Jesus. Come now, for the banquet is ready. Please stand if you're able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you, preserve you, and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. God, for whom we wait, in this meal you give us a foretaste of the day that when the hungry will be fed with good things. Send us forth to make known your deeds, to proclaim the greatness of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And receive the blessing. May God who gathers us in love lead you in pathways of righteousness and justice. May God who knows us more deeply than we know ourselves lead you in pathways of forgiveness and freedom. And may God who fills us with good things lead you in pathways of equity and abundance. And the blessing of the Holy Trinity one God, be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. the 
Spirit give now to guide us unto heaven, young and holy, just and true, working both to will and do. Lord of harvest, great and kind, rouse to action heart and mind. Let the gathering nations all see your light and heed your call. So go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. We will. Thanks be to God.